and we'll leave it there to ponder its next duty. Hello and welcome to the August 2019 update from Clydebridge Station. Now this update has been filmed on the 24th of August 2019 and as well as a new arrival here at Clybridge Station, by remarkable coincidence, today also marks the launch of the Trans Pennine Express push pull trains. 15 rakes um, will be eventually created, powered by a Class 68 locomotive at one end with a driving van trailer at the other end with passenger accommodation in the DVT. So whilst it's great to celebrate look, the return of locomotive hauled trains to the Trans Pennine network, it's by, as I say, by a remarkable coincidence that I can show you the first um, part of this month's update is a new arrival here. This is 47461, Charles Rennie Mackintosh, and like the other 12 Class 47s on my layout, this machine is a Bachman Class 47. Now it was bought on eBay and it's a Rails of Sheffield limited edition one and the certificate has numbered mine at number 12 of 512 produced. The locomotive carries the Highland Stag symbol signifying that it was allocated to Inverness depot and it carries as I say the blue stripe Scott Rail livery and was the only class 47 slash 4 to carry this livery that was perhaps better remembered as being on the class 47 slash 7s, the push pull ones, like what's on 47708 Waverley. This is likely to be the last of my class 47s. I feel that 13 for the amount of work I'm going to have on the layout with three local trains, the sleeper train, a push pull train, two intercity trains, a trans pennine train and a regional railways um, express train 13 uh, is likely to be more than enough for me and I'll, obviously that will mean that diagrams getting changed uh, during the day so the plan is that in the future I'm going to do two videos where I describe each um, class 47 to you and give you a bit of history with it and I'll use information from the Class 47 website run by Paul Appleby. I'm going to seek his permission first to be able to do that beforehand though. Uh, hopefully he gives me that. And then I'll give you an insight into meeting my locomotive fleet. Whilst one locomotive has arrived, there's a notable missing locomotive over on the siding here at the depot. There's no shunter. Now what's happened is when I took 47461 in today to Scooney Hobbies, I left both that and the shunter um, with them. Now I'll return later on in the morning to collect the locomotive, the Class 47, expecting that the shunter would have to be left behind for it to get sent away for repair. And that's exactly what's happened. Now there's a gentleman that Scooney Hobbies uses and he collects um, any broken or faulty models each week from them and he takes them away and has a go at repairing them so it's likely to be at least a couple of weeks before I'll have 08818 back at Clybridge and hopefully it'll be working. What I'm going to have to do in the meantime is use one of my class 47s as a super shunter. I'm also not very happy about this machine still poking out of the depot 47834 Firefly and I'm actually toying with the idea of actually replacing this because the body doesn't sit right at this end here, you can just see that there. I'm going to toy with the idea probably in 2020 of replacing this with another 47834 if I can get one on eBay. And if it's DCC ready it should just be a case of taking the chip out of this one and putting it into the other one. Um, but that's obviously well into the future. It does run, but it just always stops suddenly when you actually slow it down, so things need to get looked at, but it doesn't quite sit right. In fact, if I were to show you from there, you can see that there is a little bit of a lean to the left on it, so that will probably get replaced, but that's well into the future. But 47461 has been given a short run around the layout, and is working very well, and for a few of my friends who've been complaining, that the locomotives that I have in the layout don't have a Scottish feel to them. I hope this appeases them uh, to some extent. Now in terms of scenic work done in the layout this month, there hasn't been too much done. 
Uh, so it'll be a short update, but last month after I put the update up, West Blythe TMD put a comment on my July update suggesting I put some gates in here. <clears throat> and that's what I've done. It's Bachman gates that I've used. And that's a, a small single gate, and these are the wide double gates and just a bit of fencing that I've created at the end there. And I've also used one of the Ten Commandments signs, stuck on a bit of plastic card and glued it on. And we've got there a keep clear sign. And following that advice from West Blythe TMD, I'm very pleased with the result that's come out from that. It, they were right with their suggestion. And because I just going a little bit there, you can see it clearly. It does um, make it look fully complete now. I'm very pleased with that. I've also um, put a bit of fencing up here, the wooden fencing, to shut off the siding a little bit. And you can just see it's not quite, it's not straight, I know, but I've got a little gate there as well. These ones were actually stuck not with um, super glue, but with um, polystyrene cement, humbrol, which I got at the Strathspey Railway actually. Um, so I'm very pleased with how that's turned out. The paths here are all a bit rough, but I can't do anything about that now. This has still got to get painted yet. I'm also swithering and repaint, just trying to paint over this again, and then putting down some new uh, white lines from Ten Commandments. But again, that's something I'll give a bit of thought to in the future. However, West Blythe TMD were absolutely spot on with their suggestion there. I'm very pleased with how that's turned out. While I'm on about the depot and scenery, this is very fine like grey ballast. I've been using some uh, different ballast when I've been doing the road, the pathways on the depot roads here. You can actually see it if I just come down here. But I picked this up today at Scooney Hobbies. I think this will actually be a bit better for making the walkways in the depot. I will experiment with it because I've got to finish off this bit here and glue it down and then obviously paint it over um, it's by Tasma Products uh, from Hertfordshire so I'll say I'll give that a shot I've also got some more normal ballast just for the depot roads because a lot of these can now actually get ballasted so um, that will be my next task also in the depot though I've done some more putting the vegetation in here and I'm just going to keep on working my way up there and obviously I'll work my way around here too. I'm still no further forward with this problem with the coaches yet but I think I might end up just getting um, experimenting uh, in various ways to find out what's causing this. One person did suggest putting a taking the bogey off this coach and putting a washer on and seeing if I could raise the, the profile I, I might as I say go and replace the wheels on them with the wheels that's actually on this back my Mark IIe aircon here Mark IIe Scooney Hobbies do sell those wheels so I might actually go down that road first of all I think it's going to be a problem I'm going to have on the parcels train as well with the all blue um, NKV van as well. Now the compound's finished almost down at the station. Put a bit of high fencing in there and I've got a bit of fencing there and a single road gate. It's just wide enough to get the, the wee car through if they were ever doing that for real. It still needs a, a, a sign on it. Um, I don't know what sign I'll put up on it yet but I've got quite a few to choose from, so I'll be looking around in, at that in the next few uh, days. I'm also going to um, start work soon on putting some signage in the station area. And I think what I'll do is I'll start off with an information board. I've still got some of those signs from Thank You Scenics. Uh, timetables and that, so I might put one round about here. What I'm going to do is look at some photographs um, of some stations in the 80s and 90s, particularly some of the London terminals such as Waterloo 
and just see what the layouts were on the platforms there and it'll give me a good idea as to what I need to position and where. Now for the lamps, by the way, you know, do the station lighting, the bits of paper where there's the joins and the platforms, they'll actually be the ideal place to put my lamps, I think. And then possibly put one there as well. There and there, so those joins and the bits of paper will come in handy. That says well into the future. However, um, expect work to start on some sort of signage here in the next day, uh, wee while. I'll finish off this month's update with um, progress up here where the retail park will be or is. I've got a bollard down at the co-op now and I'll zoom it in so you can actually see it. It's the same sort of blue that I'm able to use for the co-op building and it's also the same sort of blue that's going to be used on the the ground frames in the depot. It's also by coincidence the same sort of blue that's going to be on here. This is a Ten Commandments uh, low relief unit and that'll be a excuse me that's going to be a branch of Halfords and I've got another Ten Commandments unit to put in there and this is a new bit of backing wood that'll get painted a different shade of blue these are not glued on yet and the board itself is not a attached either. I'm having a job actually attaching it to the shed so I'm going to have to find a slightly longer screw or nail to be able to do that. But another bit will have to go in there. I'll get painted blue and then what will happen after that is I'll get Halford signage on there and paint that door grey, paint the roof grey and that'll be that second bit done there. With regards to the co-op over here, I'm thinking about maybe getting a brand new shop frontage and using the polystyrene cement instead because I used super glue and it left all these stains so I might use the polystyrene cement to put it together and then paint it blue the same shade of blue as that and, and the bollard and that paint this blue because the blue is a corpse corporate colour and possibly put um, a co-op and maybe put the name of the society um, I might actually ask the co-op what the name of the society was in Lanarkshire in 1990 just to make it a bit more authentic. I also bought today at Scooney Hobbies this one, this paint here. And what's going to happen with that is, <coughs> um, it's going to concern over here because this is not going to be the department store for the co-op. That's going to be a shopping centre. And I'm going to paint this beige. This is originally meant to be slate for the roof. I'm going to paint this beige and I've got a couple of these and what I'll do with them is that'll make the, the walling for the side of the shopping centre, the Commonwealth Shopping Centre. I went for that uh, beige colour by the way because just opposite Kirkcaldy Indoor Market on Kirkcaldy High Street um, is a gap site that's currently fenced off but for many years it was actually a co-op department store on two levels. Um, it closed in the late 1990s and then it was taken over by um, another company as a furniture store until they went bust. And the tiles were actually about that sort of colour. It had a tiled in front and that was the sort of colour it had. So I'm going to try and recreate it that way and then get signage put on plastic card and stuck on. So there's a wee bit of work to be done yet. Um, <coughs> but I'm very pleased with the progress uh, in the retail park. I'm taking my time with it and not rushing it. Now the heat is bothering me, so it nearly made me forget to mention some other layouts this month. But Dean Park Station has an arrival, or two. He's got his Mark II F coaches in the ScotRail Salt Tyre livery. And he's got the Inter 7 City power cars as well. 1980s British Rail fans, fear not. He is not converting his layout to the <coughs> 2019 era. No, no, no. He is He's just doing these um, just for show and occasional demonstration. His layout is going to be firmly entrenched in the British Rail era. So uh, you do not have to worry about that at all. Everard Junction 
has uh, repainted a class 40, uh, sorry, a class 31. Told you he was bothering me. And he shows you how he went about doing that as well. Everard Junction is set in the same era as us. If you're more for the modern era, New Junction, Richard Watson, he's actually done a, a, a recent update as well. Uh, so check him out. Also check out um, <coughs> a, a layout from Down Under. Uh, you'll find him mainly on Instagram, Kiwi British Rail. <coughs> he's modelled in the British Rail era, but he's in New Zealand. If you're also keen on uh, more modern layouts as well, the uh, I'm, and I'm not just meaning from the British Rail era, but I mean the post-privatisation era, Dudley Central, which is set in the West Midlands. Do check him out. I mentioned West Blythe, then TMD, or it could be MPD, but do check them out too. And Charlie Bishop, who, who runs... Um, Chadwick TMD in Chadwick Junction, he's been installing a viaduct on his 1970s, late 60s, early 70s set dieselisation layout. And he offers you some tips as to how, how to go things and good explanations of things as well. And unlike me, who gives you monthly updates, Charlie does fortnightly updates, so he keeps you in the breast a lot more often. So do check out Charlie Bishop, Chadwick Junction Chadwick TMD and I'm sure they'll all be delighted if you subscribe to them. Now just before I go, my plan um, uh, for the next month is obviously to get that Halfords building finished and get started in the shopping centre. I don't think I'll be doing much <coughs> in the way of the station throat at the moment. But hopefully by the return of, by the time of the September update we'll have a, sh a fully working class 08 shunter for you once again. Which might allow 47474 to actually bring this thing into platform 5. And the shunter could then come along, pull it out and push, propel it into platform 6. Go back to the depot and allow 47474 to couple onto it. And you never know, by then, we might actually have a, a blue-grey Mark 1 BG as well for it too. So, fingers crossed. So, that's all from Clyde Bridge Station for this month. Whatever you're doing, please do enjoy your layouts. And I look forward to uh, hearing from you with any comments, queries or suggestions. And also seeing you next month. Goodbye for now.